Welcome, thanks for being here. I'd like to talk to you today about hypothyroidism. It's a situation that is becoming more and more prevalent um, in our population. Now, an important thing to point out is when we have overt hypothyroidism, in other words, when your TSH, which is a measurement of how your thyroid's working, is above 5.5, we've called that's officially hypothyroid. Now, what's interesting is the TSH values are continually getting lowered by the labs because what we know to be happening is is that there's a large percentage of the population that is actually subclinically hypothyroid. What does that mean? Well, subclinical hypothyroidism basically means you have the symptoms of hypothyroid. You're tired, you're fatigued, you have cold sensitivity, your hands and feet are cold or you're real sensitive to the cold. You wake up and you feel puffy in the morning. Your eyelids are puffy, your eyes. Your joints are stiff, you're constipated, you have dry skin. You might have mild depression. If you're a woman, you might have irregular periods or painful periods. You might have insomnia. These are all, you might have skin rashes and worsening eczema. Those are signs of hypothyroidism. But what happens is because the laboratory range is so wide, it goes from 0.5 to 5.5, there's a huge gap where people are being missed. Now, what's happening is, is I use a value of 2 as my cutoff for my TSH. Certainly, I let people run a little higher, but I like to see everybody at 2 and below. Once we're hitting 2, I know that there's issues with the thyroid. So, what that's saying is, is everybody who falls between 2 and 5.5, if you go to your doctor, he'll say everything's fine. But it's not really fine. That's the point of what I'm trying to make here, is that what we need to do is also measure free T4 and free T3. So when I measure somebody's thyroid, I'm measuring TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, I'm measuring free T4, and I'm measuring free T3. Without free T4 and free T3, we actually only have one third of the picture. We don't even have the whole picture of the thyroid. I can't tell you how many times Patients come in, they say, oh, my doctor said my thyroid's fine. I'm saying, okay, fine, let's see. I get a TSH, but I get a free T4 and a free T3, and I can't tell you how many times people come back and their free T3 will do. Their free T3 will be low, or their free T4 and free T3 will be low, but their TSH will be in normal zones. So what happens is, is I get those measurements on everyone. So anyone who's watching this who has thyroid concerns, who thinks they may be hypothyroid, whose mother, whose sisters, whose brothers, whose father, who has any family relative, first degree or other, who has hypothyroidism, you must pay attention. You need to get free T4 and free T3 as part of the lab measurement, otherwise you're not getting an appropriate picture. Interestingly enough, the labs have just reduced the top value of TSH down to 4.5 and from 5.5. So you could be between 2 and 4.5 to 5.5 and your doctors are telling you you're fine, but you're not. Your energy is low, you're gaining weight, you feel sluggish, and it's because your thyroid's not working right. Now, in my practice, what I like to do is obviously get all the numbers, but also look at why your thyroid may not be working right. So if you're a perimenopausal woman, we know that progesterone increases the conversion of T4 to T3. So I may not give you thyroid hormone, but I may actually give you some bioidentical progesterone cream because if I bring your progesterone level up, what's going to happen is you're going to make more free T3 and your thyroid is going to be happier and TSH will come down. The other thing I like to look for is environmental issues for having slow thyroid function. A lot of this can be caused by chlorine, halogens in our environment, and bromine which are used now as food preservatives. So these things can affect thyroid function as well as iodine deficiency. So there are simple things that we can do to help promote the health of the thyroid. We all know that the amount of iodine that we get is far less than our Asian counterparts and they don't have nearly as much thyroid dysfunction as we do. So when we're talking about hypothyroidism, I think it's very important to know that the measurements that we're taking, free T3, free T4, TSH, are essential to know what is going on with your thyroid. If you just have a TSH and a total T4, it doesn't count. It's okay, but it doesn't give the whole picture. Additionally, 
If there's any autoimmune thyroid problems in the family, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, then we want to measure something called TPO, thyroid peroxidase antibody. That's an important number to know as well in case we have some autoimmune issues going on that we have to deal with. Now, in my practice what I like to use are the porcine glandulars such as Armour Thyroid or Nature Thyroid for people who can tolerate them. I like these because they have both T4 and T3 in it and people tend to respond much better to them than to Synthroid because with Synthroid you actually only have T4. Now your body takes T4 and makes T3 out of it and then uses T3. So T3 is actually what's being used by your body. T4 is just the substrate for what's going to be created. So it's like I give you a 55 gallon drum of crude oil and say drive your car. You can't do it. The oil has to be refined into gasoline. So when I give you Armour Thyroid, for example, it has a little gasoline in it. So your body's refining, but you also have some gasoline to get to the store today. So that tends to work a lot better. Now in some people with autoimmune issues, they don't necessarily respond as well to armor or other people who we can't stabilize their thyroid. What I'll do then is do a bioidentical compounded prescription for thyroid. It's bioidentical thyroid which takes T4 and T3 and mixes in them into an appropriate dosage in a time-released capsule that you can then take. So you're getting the T4 and the T3, but in a bioidentical form. It's not porcine. It's um, actually T4 and levothyroxine and T3 combined together in a time-release form. So when I'm treating thyroid dysfunction, I'm looking at all of these things, and I'm really looking to see you know, how they play into what's happening. Once again, like I said, the hormones in a woman, progesterone is needed for the conversion of thyroid. So as women become peri and menopausal, what happens is their progesterone goes down and their thyroid's going to begin working less. And that's when do you think we start seeing thyroid dysfunction, but at those years in the fourth decade. So we like to look at everything here and look at all the factors to really be able to determine how to help your metabolism, how to help your thyroid. Remember, using less medicines less things are better so we really try to be minimalistic in terms of the interventions but we do like to look at all the aspects of the hormones involved so at the very least you should all be asking to see TSH's free T3, free T4 if you think you have an autoimmune process going on have them check a thyroid peroxidized antibody or a TPO is the abbreviation and certainly there should be discussions on the type of thyroid medicine you're taking. If you don't feel good on your Synthroid or on your T4, then you know have a discussion about switching to a T4, T3 compound. If the doctors aren't comfortable with using one of the porcine glandulars, the Armour or the Nature Thyroid, they can do a prescription for T4 and T3 together. So it's really about communication when it comes to doctor-patient relationship. And I'm obviously a real proponent of a two-way conversation. And when it comes to thyroid function and when it comes to this kind of thing, it really is a one-way conversation, unfortunately, with a lot of the patients trying to get help. They know their bodies, they know what they need, but they're not having any success at it. So please, look around out there. There's a lot of docs who are very aware of this. Um, I know many of them because I'm going to all the conferences. This is not really new news. We've known about this a long time. You need to have all your thyroid numbers checked. Everything has to be modulated. Your TSH should hover around 2 or better below um, for optimal functioning. And um, any other questions, please feel free to contact me or the clinic. We'll be happy to help out. Have a great day.